Hi, I'm Christine Sue, and I'm the CEO and founder of Summer Technologies, and I'm here to talk to you about software for cowboys. Um, I'm a sustainable foodie, and I've been involved in the sustainable food movement for the past 10 years. But even if you haven't been paying attention to market trends, grass-fed beef and dairy are a humongous business and set to grow 25% year-on-year for the past five years. And there's plenty of headroom for grass-fed beef and dairy to grow as consumers get more and more aware of the health and environmental benefits of it. The headroom is $220 billion in a huge industrial uh, food system that we have. So as I looked into the sustainable food system, I started to realize that um, leading retailers like Chipotle and Whole Foods actually weren't sourcing from the US, which was curious to me given that we have such a big food industry. And in fact, they're importing from Australia and New Zealand. And the reason for this is because we simply don't have a very consolidated food industry in terms of pasture-raised meat and dairy. Compared to the industrial food system, we've got 900,000 very fragmented small and medium family ranches who are basically mini CEOs running their own mom and pop shops and running their operations on paper and pen and Excel, um, maybe QuickBooks. So they face a lot of operational difficulties, such as the question of grazing management, which for California ranchers last year was a $150,000 problem. Grazing management is simply put, how much grass do I have for the rest of my, my season? Uh, am I going to run out of grass and therefore have to import tens of thousands of dollars of hay every month to supplement those cows? And what time should I start to sell off my cattle in order not to make a loss? This is why I built PastureMap, which is the first intelligent grazing management platform for sustainable cattle ranchers. So with their iPad or their smartphone, ranchers can go out and measure how much grass they have on their land when they're making their grazing moves, which they're doing every day anyway, um, rate the quality of the grass as well as how high it is, and then our algorithms calculate how much they have in terms of pounds per acre using leading research from major agricultural universities from New Zealand and the US um, to tell them how much grass inventory they have on their land, as well as for their specific herds feed requirements, how many days worth they have left, which means that they are a better able to make operating decisions on how many grazing days they have left, whether they should buy hay or whether they should sell cattle, all of which directly hit their bottom line. My company is all about empowering ranchers and putting data back in the hands of the people who need it the most so that they can make better operational decisions. We are a SaaS-based platform. We charge 500 bucks a year for membership, but we do also have that learning component uh, of actually a lot of the ranchers that we've worked with have started to ask whether we will share that data on an aggregated basis so they can understand their productivity metrics uh, across different types of soil and different types of climate so they can compare their per uh, performance against other ranchers who are facing the same issues. We also think that this aggregated data will be extremely powerful for um, empowering ranchers to aggregate more buying power down the supply chain, which is currently very nascent for the sustainable beef industry. Here's some of these operational opportunities in the supply chain. For example, farm financing. There's, it's basically an archaic industry right now where there is no benchmarking of performance and letting the best ranchers who have the most productive capabilities get uh, preferential access to land or to leasing. And similarly, down the supply chain to slaughterhouses, processors, and down to the retailers and distributors, there's actually a lot of opacity in terms of how much inventory is coming down that pipeline. Uh, I used to work in operations management and I used to build supply chain software, so I see a huge opportunity there. So on to the team. Uh, I'm Christine, I'm the CEO. I'm currently an MBA at Stanford and I'm also getting a joint degree in sustainable, sustainability and land use and agriculture. And before coming back to business school, uh, I worked at McKinsey and KKR and built operations performance management systems for their portfolio companies. Uh, my software lead is a rock star Stanford computer science grad. Joel, we're both graduating uh, this weekend and doing this full time. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we also have a great designer, as well as our leading sales rep, who, has, who is a shepherd who owns his own farm in Wisconsin and has over 25 years of grazing experience. Uh, we've been really excited by the traction we've gotten so far. Um, we've been working on this during school, and we just launched our first app uh, last month. We currently have 30 ranches uh, that are signed up using it in five states and three countries. And last month, we got funding from the government of New Zealand also to expand a pilot down there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, New Zealand is one of the leading countries in grazing management. So, 
Um, we are funded by some of the best angel investors in the Valley, as, um, including Anya and Stas, who you know have been running this great conference, and hopefully you recognize some of the other names up here as well. Uh, given the exciting traction we've been getting, we are going to be raising a second seed round uh, very soon, so if you're interested in coming to talk to us, uh, please come talk to me about sustainable supply chain. Thanks. S thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Simon Sider, for uh, information. So, thank you. Now it's time for judges to ask questions. Please. So, uh, at $500 a year and with such a large number of potential customers, there, how, we, how do you sell this cost effectively? It seems like it's a low ASP, uh, but potentially a pretty expensive sales process. That's a great question. Um, we're definitely not going to be hiring a direct sales force for driving out to ranches one by one. Um, actually, there are big cattlemen's associations and uh, organic associations in almost every state. Uh, we're currently in talks with several of them, but most of these associations have anywhere between 500 to 1,000 customers per group. So um, it, over the summer, we're going to be going to a lot of grazing conferences and going to these associations. Oh, I should also mention that we, um, we got an article leaked about us in American Cattlemen last month, and then that got 20,000 views, all of them from ranchers. So they do use Facebook. Wow. <laughs> well, actually, um, our fund group actually knows something about ranching and that our family is a part of the King Ranch. So we, are, we know about uh, ra ra grazing uh, cattle on, on grass, uh, but also operating in a feedlot as well. But how will you... Um, uh, how will you monetize the larger opportunities that certainly at $500, it's not going to be an enormous business? How are you going to build this into a big business? Yeah, so we never, we kept the ASP for the ranchers themselves low because we never want to price them out of being able to upload their information onto the platform. Uh, but the opportunities for supply chain management are pretty big with you know, places like Panorama Ranch and other uh, meat marketing companies that supply places like Whole Foods, those would be more of the traditional enterprise software contracts where we would build in based on, you know, they get, their, they get all of their supplying ranches onto our platform and then we build our API to match into their ERP system so that they can know during the season how much uh, grass is on the land of their suppliers and how much inventory is likely to be coming down the pipeline. Um, one question here. <laughs> so for your first product, how do you monitor the condition of the grass? I mean, you s my question was regarding your business model, your pure SaaS model. Well, it sounds very nice, but you may have to touch the physical side. I mean, for example, the condition of the grassland, now we are under drought. How do you sort of uh, take a look into those, uh, where's your data? Yeah. So the data is, the play is to get ranchers to start recording the data as they're moving their cattle around. So the current situation is that a typical 10,000 acre ranch, which is pretty small by American standards, um, the rancher will literally drive out or send his ranch hands to drive out and understand what the condition of the land is. But with mobile, you know, image tagging, that syncs up to the cloud when their cowboys are moving uh, their animals around the land. You actually get that real-time data fed up into the cloud and into the dashboard that the ranch manager is seeing. So it's manual input, but we do see a lot of opportunity in the future for as microsatellite data gets more advanced to get real-time feeds of the grass quality. So you have a mobile app? Yep. Okay. And how long does it take for a customer to actually begin getting value out of the app? I would say it's immediate. I mean, it's, you download the app and then you start recording, right? So, um, but there's enough on, data in there right away for them to start making. I mean, decisions. the immediate value is if you're the ranch manager and I'm the cowboy, for you to not have to drive out 20 miles down to your second ranch to check out the grass. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. What is so unique about the technology, and, and who is your competition? Uh, I would say for the industry, the uniqueness is more applying technology that we know works in other industries to an industry that has traditionally not used mobile technology. There is currently, to my knowledge, no mobile cloud enterprise technology for monitoring what's going on on the land that's geotagged uh, that syncs up to a satellite map. Um, we have Our biggest competitor is Excel and clipboards. Um, in New Zealand, there are a couple of companies that are funded by the New Zealand government um, but they are desktop based and much more academic and actually they charge out at like uh, I think it's fourteen hundred dollars per license per year And then it's so complicated that they actually have to charge out another grazing consultant to go help the ranchers implement that software to do their feed budgeting for the year 
Um, how much customization does your technology require? Very little. So I've spoken to 600 farmers and ranchers over the past three years and worked on 20 ranches in four continents uh, in order to make sure that the metrics that we're using, pounds per acre or kilograms per hectare, depending on what country you're in, is a standardized metric that almost all ranches use to measure their feed. Do you, um, one question on the market. Uh, what, um, if you look at the $500 that you're charging a year um, times the number of addressable uh, farms, how big is that market and does your, mar does your plan depend on you expanding that monetization to other areas? No. Um, so the, there are 900,000 ranchers. The value that we create for them is on the order of ten to $30,000 of saved feed costs per year. So if you multiply that out, it's about an $18 billion market opportunity. But with my ASP, I'm clearly not charging all of that to the rancher. The value is in creating, making it super easy and a no-brainer for them to adopt that technology and then using the aggregated data to help them influence the supply chain. So it will, uh, you know, increasing our product um, impact will depend on si locking down marketing companies and suppliers and using that data to charge them enterprise software prices. What is your three-year revenue projections? Uh, talk to me afterwards. Okay, any questions from uh, tables? No? Okay, let's thank uh, Summer Technologies. Okay, thank you. Thank you.